Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting the channel via PayPal or Patreon. You'll find the links in the video description. Round 10, the penultimate round of the Olympiad in Chennai. And the big top board clash was between the two teams of teenagers. We have Uzbekistan in the lead with 16 points against India 2 on 15. So this was an extraordinary match. If one of these teams could win, that could set them up for victory going to the last round. Well, I'm actually going to look at the board four game between the two oldies in the team. We have Jahongir Vahidov from Uzbekistan. He's 27 years old, ancient, against Adiban Baskaran, 29 years old. He's almost about to turn 30, actually. And this was a pretty extraordinary game. I'll tell you what happened in the other games after this one, because the whole match was mad. But anyway, so Vakhidov from Uzbekistan with white. It's an English and absolutely normal variation here. Usually we see knight c6, then either e3 or g3. Anyway. That's main line. But Adiban played e4. Now, I remember playing this, I mean, decades ago. It was always thought that this was a bit dubious, and it is dubious. But there was a gambit you could play with b5, which was great fun if white well, took it and then you got a bit of a centre. But actually, it was discovered that d3 is a very simple move, and white just gets a lead in development. So what on earth is Adiban doing playing this completely discredited move, e4? Well, here is the idea. c6, he gives a pawn away for nothing. Incredible. In fact, this has been played in quite a few blitz games, but never, I uh, don't think in very serious games. And Adiban has done this in kind of online blitz stuff before. So what's the big idea? Well, Vakhidov took the pawn, took it very quickly, actually. He clearly wasn't surprised by this variation. So it's a pure gambit. Black gives up a pawn, but gains some time by pushing this knight around. And Adiban previously has faced knight c3 in an online game, but you can see that knight gets pushed a bit, and black has some space, and very easy development, some compensation, you could say. But Vakhidov very quickly played knight g3. And very quickly, good old Harry was shot down the board, h5, just causing some mischief, wants to get this move in. Now, if this pawn is blocked, let's say with h4, then bishop d6 is a bit annoying, put some pressure here. So Vahidov, again, very quickly, just played e3, which gives the knight a square on e2. Well, I mean, black does have a bit of space. I mean, maybe this pawn could be used later. Black's development is easier than white's. But d4, I mean, this certainly looks good for white. Solid pawn chain. This pawn is isolated on d5. There you go, I've given it a sickly green colour. Don't like it there. I mean, if this were some kind of end game, then white's a pawn up, and that pawn on d5 is forever a weakness. But black has a lead in development. And, well, let's just say very very free development for, for, for his pieces. And queen f6 is kind of an outrageous move again. Knight c3 and then queen g6. You know, we're always told, don't get your queen out too early. But the queen is, well, for white, a bit annoying. Because it stops that bishop coming out because the g-pawn can be taken. So it just disrupts the kind of flow of white's development. 
well, why can't white take that pawn on d5? Well, you can. I mean, this is the other outrageous thing about this queen maneuver. So bishop d6 covers the c7 square. The knight probably at some point has to go back. Bishop f5. Well, black is now two pawns down, but very free development. You know, rooks in the middle. You know, it's not, not so simple. If you have a computer, well, maybe good luck with that with, with white. But if you don't, not so easy. So f3. Um, Fakhidov still playing quite quickly. Bishop d6. Now, already black has some threats here. If, let's say, bishop d2, then you can take on h2. There you go. That certainly proves... Uh, the point of black's queen manoeuvre, so if rook takes, then queen g3 check. There you go, wins the rook on h2. So after bishop d6, well, now we see the point of f3. I mean, it does cover these squares, covers some light squares, that's one thing. But it just makes room for the king, and that covers the g-pawn, and now white is ready to develop. Hadiban played bishop g3 check. Again, these both players playing quite quickly. So if that's taken, then you can see the h file opens, rook takes rook is coming, and if white tries to hang on to the rook, well, that is fatal. Checkmate. So after bishop g3 check, the king came back to g1. I mean, this is a ludicrous position. Now this is a threat, so the bishop had to retreat. And the king popped out. So they're actually repeating the position. And so this happened a couple of times. Now, if white wants to claim a draw, then you can play king f2. Or you, you, you can announce that you're going to play king f2. And that's a threefold repetition. It's, it would be a draw. But Vakhidov decides he's a pawn up. He thought for almost 11 minutes and decided to play on. Bravo. Well done. No, thank you. He's playing for more. So this pushes the bishop back to b8. And that gives white time to play bishop d3, attacking the queen. Which just comes to f6. And the knight comes to c3. Hitting the pawn here on d5, which is covered by the bishop. And now the king emerges. And now it's sort of safe to bring the king out to f2. It's noticeable at this point both players had really slowed up. They were starting to, to take their time over their moves. But it feels as though uh, white has definitely achieved something here. The king looks reasonably safe on f2. The bishop has developed. Castles by Adiban. So he's got his king to safety. This king, well, a little bit wobbly, but not too bad. And f4, well, that certainly gives the king more security because it blocks out that bishop on b8. And it might be possible now to move the rook because the bishop is no longer looking at h2. And the other thing about f4, a rook e8 played by Adiban, looks reasonable, looking down the semi-open file, is that it makes room for the queen to come to f3. Now, given a few moves, you know, if this bishop develops and the rook comes into the game, this rook comes out, the king comes back to g1, then that could just be an extra pawn for nothing. So this is actually a crunch moment for Adiban. You know, if he continues making normal moves, you know, bishop out, rook out, well, you know, as I said, white can do the same, and white should be better there with his extra pawn. So this was the moment. Adiban thought for 13 minutes and struck with knight takes d4, and here is where, I mean, it's been pretty wacky already, but here is where the position just blows up. So pawn takes knight, and now, okay, I'll just give you a little moment. I mean, I should have asked you before. How does black follow this one up? I'll have a little slurp of tea. Cheers, everybody.
and you have a little think. Black to play. What did Ariban do next? Well, he did not play queen takes pawn check because after this, actually, white is safe enough. If bishop here, then queen takes d5. But instead, after pawn takes knight, he played bishop g4 straight away. So he's a black is a piece down, and now he's giving another one away. Well, that actually... Well, I won't say any more. Okay, I'm going to give you a, another chance to think. So now it's white to play. So Vahidov from Uzbekistan. What did he play in this position? In this crunch match. Uzbekistan against India too. White to play. Well, in this position, if you found rookie one, congratulations, because that is not a simple move. He thought for 19 minutes over that one. Did you think of for 19 seconds and found it? Well, well done. Um, first of all, let's just see what happens if queen takes bishop, then this is actually winning for black. Uh, the king just gets mauled, uh, for example. King f2, bishop c7 and bishop b6. That's not good. Or if knight e2, well, again... Black can just develop. I mean, white is not going to get out of this pin. And there's also a check down there to, to win the rook, by the way. So uh, queen takes bishop, loses. Well, what about queen takes pawn here? Well, bishop takes f4, and once again, white's king is just going to get a mauling in this position. It's, it's just too much. So rookie one is really the only move. I mean, that's an incredible move. If, well, let's take a look. If uh, bishop takes queen, then rook takes rook is actually checkmate. That escape square is covered. And rook takes rook. Queen takes g4. That's the point. So if queen takes pawn, then that rook can be taken. And actually, this is now winning for white. Because if queen takes bishop, check... And the rook drops in the corner. That's pretty outrageous. Um, so after rook e1, Ariban played queen takes pawn check. Now, don't drop back with a king because then black has time to take with check this time. And then you take the queen. Not good. So bishop e3 and queen takes bishop. Okay, this queen is still attacked. So queen takes bishop. The so white is a piece up, but d4 wins back material. That's the trick. Now, the position still hasn't settled. White's king still isn't completely safe here. Pawn takes bishop check. King goes back. Now Ariban thought for about 10 minutes and played queen c4. He might have had more chances with queen g6, but it is... thing is, you know, the boot is on the other foot now. Black has to be very careful because that rook, just for a moment, is out of play. So, anyway, queen c4 played, knight d5. Now, this is a really dangerous counterattack. Knight f6 threatened. Sometimes you can even play knight e7. This is... Very dangerous. So the queen dropped back to c6. That covers the f6 square. And queen g5. Be careful. Now knight e7 threatened. e2. Counterplay at the other end of the board. Rook c1. Queen c6. Okay, that looks a lot safer for black now. Um, looking at, well, to protecting the pawn and protecting the king as well. Rook c2 wants to recover the pawn. And here, Adiban played f6 and offered a draw, which was accepted. What is going on? Okay, well, let me try and explain <laughs> the draw offer and um, the acceptance. Well, first of all, if 
black gets a draw in this team match, remember, then that's a decent result for the team. So a draw, certainly no disgrace for, for Adiban. Um, but what's actually happening in the position? Well, in fact, there are, there are several paths that the, the game could go down, but they all seem to lead to roughly level positions. So, for example, um, I mean, White could just swipe that pawn, which actually simplifies down to an end game, and there's not a lot going on. I mean, black is a pawn up, but actually, with the rook on the seventh, white can hold fairly easily. I mean, that's one way for white to play. That's a simple way. You can also play queen h5, so that holds onto this knight. Bishop takes pawn. Okay, that's an annoying move for white to deal with. In fact, everything is fine. So not knight takes bishop because of queen e3 check and you win the piece back. But, for example, rook takes c2, takes e2 rather, bishop e5. And now this move leads to a draw by force after this check. Rook takes, I mean the fireworks still haven't quite um, died down yet. Um, of course, in this position that couldn't, uh, that, that, that shouldn't be taken. Um, I think rook f1 is going to be very nasty in that position. But queen b6 check, rook e3 takes, queen h6 check, and that picks up the rook, and again, that will lead to a very level rook and pawn end game. So, I mean, there are other ways for to to uh, equalize the position as well. But so, a draw is a, a correct result. But it's a pity they didn't play the game out. Uh, just a few more moves, but it's definitely drawn by this point. Wow. Uh, so that was the kind of prelude to an extraordinary match. Actually, um, another game that was drawn was board, let me see, board uh, two, Sahirin against, Sahirin, Nihal Sahirin against Yakubayev. Uh, that was a draw. But on board three, Pragnananda defeated Sindarov. Let me just show you that game, if I can find it very, very quickly. Brilliant technique from Pragnananda to win this one. That was the final position. Well, Prag with white played rook g1 here. <clears throat> Let me just show you why did black resign. Well, your technique's still got to be pretty good here. If you play rook a1, then this position, this is actually a theoretical draw. Uh, but the win is this. Rook g7, a very important move, keeping that king kind of corralled. And after this, rook b7 hits the bishop, and now h7, and black has to give up the bishop to stop the pawn going through. So Prague won a very important game. Gukesh on top board, playing against Abdu Satorov, two young stars. Gukesh had a winning position. Abdus Satorov fought like a lion. And finally, what happened? Well, in the end, it was Gukesh. He just needed a draw for India 2 to win the match, but instead he blundered here. Knight f3, queen b7, double attack, and Gukesh had to resign. It was, I mean, that's the 72nd move. It was a really tricky position. Um, I mean, going way back, Gukesh had a winning position, but very difficult to, to put it home. By this stage, he's he's already worse. Very hard to hold this for White, but yeah, a real tragedy for Gukesh. So that meant that the match ended to all. It, absolutely incredible. Um, other crucial match of the day, Azerbaijan against Armenia. Whoa. Armenia won 3-1. So that means, looking at the standings, going into the final round, we have two teams in the lead, Uzbekistan 
and Armenia on 17 points. Then we have three teams on 16, India 2, India and the USA all on 16 points. Now, I'm not sure... Ah, oh, hang on. Breaking news, we have the pairings. The last round pairings will be Germany against India 2. I mean, I'm reading this for the first time. Uh, Armenia against Spain and Uzbekistan against the Netherlands. So the big, the, the top two teams, Armenia play Spain, Uzbekistan play the Netherlands. Two very tough games, actually. two very tough matches. Spain and the Netherlands have very serious teams. Uh, so that's that's absolutely fascinating. Uh, India too, and that's interesting. They play Germany, also a tough match, but it is absolutely wide open. And yeah, India, USA. If you want full details of the pairings, do check out chessresults.com um, and, and go to the, the Olympiad section there, chessresults.com, if you want all the details of who's playing against who. Um, well, we are in for an extraordinary final round, which starts at 10 o'clock in the morning in Chennai. Absolute madness. They normally the games start in the afternoon. It seems crazy to start so early in the morning, which will disrupt the regime of most sensible chess players. Um, anyway, um, Armenia and Uzbekistan in the lead with 17 points. It's going to be an extraordinary final round. Uh, I will be reporting back. I'll let you know what happens. Thanks for watching.